Welcome to Getting to Know You. This idea was started by Betty Osan with the idea that we don't really get to know the people we live with because if you're playing cards or having dinner, you wouldn't necessarily share in what we're sharing in Getting to Know You. And today we have Bob Benzer, and he and his wife, as I think everybody knows, are extremely positive contributors to Westminster Village. And um, this is part of their contribution. <laughs> so I have some information here, and I have some questions. Sure. And my understanding is that you were born in Iowa. Dubuque, Iowa, right on the Mississippi. Yeah, has it been snowy there? I'm sorry? Has it been snowy there? Oh, yeah, it was. In fact, they had terrible floods uh -huh. when I was younger and uh, took over the lower part of the city. It was really bad. Then they mm -hmm. built these big viaducts that keep the Mississippi from coming in. <laughs> but they, they had some bad times there, too. Uh -huh. but it's pretty nice now. They have uh, all of the docks and uh, the different things set up so they don't get that flood anymore. Uh -huh. now, plus, they also have uh, a lot of uh, boats, mm -hmm. tour, tours on the Mississippi. Yeah. Hmm. So it's been a water town. Water has been part of yeah, yeah, I, I, yeah. I spent a lot of time on the on the river mm -hmm. with uh, fishing and uh, doing uh, boating. And mm -hmm. uh, my my father and uh, his brother used to go out fishing. What would I they used catch? To, uh, go out with them. Yeah, catfish. Catfish. Oh yeah. In fact, there's a place there called Catfish Creek, uh, where everybody used to go and get their catfish for the for the Friday night fries. <laughs> <laughs> And did you like catfish? No. I no. <laughs> no, I didn't like catfish. <laughs> but you couldn't say you didn't. Huh? No. <clears throat> Those uh, catfish are pretty ugly, aren't they? Yeah, yeah. And I'm a big salmon eater. I eat a lot of salmon. Oh, me too. But I, I, uh, yep. A lot of the other fish. Yep. I can give and take. Yep. Once I had a bet with my husband when we were. Um, in salmon country, and I said I can have it morning, noon, and night, and I did for two weeks straight, and I never got tired of it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's good. So, but catfish, I don't think I could say that. No. <laughs> <laughs> you have also been um, a musician. Yes. And still are. Well, when I was young, my mother who was a great mentor for me. Mm -hmm. I was very close to my mother, and uh, she um, never forced me to do anything I didn't want to do, and she'd uh, encourage me to do things, uh -huh. if you will. And uh, uh, she wanted me to uh, take piano lessons. I didn't want to. I wanted, to, I wanted a trumpet for some reason. My brother, <laughs> my brother played, and he's five years older now, I mean, he played the, the trombone, and I wanted a trumpet. Uh -huh. and, uh, we couldn't afford one. So anyway, he had a paper route, and he uh, saved up money on his paper route to buy me an old trumpet. Oh, what and, a nice uh, brother. So that was the first, uh, <laughs> that was my first trumpet. And then uh, taking time to learn how to play, I then went to get have lessons, and uh, I got pretty much involved in it. And uh, so by the time I got to high school, I was playing in the high school band, the marching mm -hmm. band, and. Uh, at uh, all sorts of different outings. So I, I got to be interested. I like Dixieland music. I used to play a lot of Dixieland music. Uh -huh. And there was a lot of that around, uh, as you might suspect, sure. on the Mississippi. That's right. The river boats. We played on river boats. And, oh, what uh, fun. Uh, yeah, it was fun. It really was a lot of fun. And uh, so when I uh, got to high school, I, I was pretty proficient on the trumpet. and. Uh, I took some more lessons and uh, got to uh, got to the point where I was leading the high school marching band and uh -huh. all sorts stuff like that. But, uh, I think back about now and it, 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 it kind of proud of it. Uh -huh. And uh, so we got we got out of high school in '51 and it was in Dubuque and uh, we couldn't afford college. My parents couldn't. I certainly couldn't. So. Uh, I started playing in bands around town, and there were a lot of them. 
Mm -hmm. And uh, my mother <laughs> one time said to me, you know, there's an opening at the local bank. <laughs> you should go there and uh, apply for the job. And so I did. And I was hired as a bookkeeper. And, and uh, as a bookkeeper, uh, I, I never visualized myself doing that, but I did. And then I was a, a messenger, and I was a bank teller, and uh, over the years grew up, I was a loan officer. So it, it turned out to be real good for me. And, uh, mm -hmm. But I was still playing music. And uh, then in 1954, I was drafted. And uh, I didn't go of my own volition. <laughs> and uh, after a, a few weeks of basic training, I applied uh, for special services. Uh -huh. And uh, unfortunately, I was good enough to get in the special services. And uh, we all went over the, to Germany. And we spent probably the better part of two years in Germany. And uh, we were home based in Nuremberg. And I was. I didn't have the, I had a uniform, I didn't have a rifle, I just played played in the band. Mm -hmm. And uh, we played at officers clubs and uh, played for community things for the different German, German towns. And uh, we were stationed pretty much in Nuremberg and then we moved to Stuttgart, which is the base of the 7th Army. Mm -hmm. And uh, this was part of the 7th Army band. And so we, we played there a lot mm -hmm. and uh, traveled around quite a bit. It was, it was a good experience. Mm -hmm. And uh, so uh, 1956, 1957, I spent my two years and got out mm -hmm. and uh, started playing some more uh, music. And, but I also went back to the bank for a while. And <coughs> I got to the point where I realized I wasn't going to make any money bank <laughs> not being a musician. <laughs> and I uh, probably should look at uh, taking banking full time, and so I did. I uh -huh. stayed there, but I still played uh, in bands at night, dance bands, and that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. And uh, it got a little old, uh, <laughs> and uh, I thought I want something more stable. Uh -huh. And uh, so I stayed with the bank, and all the way worked up to being a loan officer. And uh, uh, they uh, sent me then to. Uh, Northwestern University, and that was in 1962, I think. Uh, 1962, uh, they have summer sessions at Northwestern for different uh, organizations. Mm -hmm. uh, the Financial Marketing Association, which I, I spent two summers doing that, uh, and then you can graduate after that. Mm -hmm. And so I uh, spent two summers doing that, 64. 63 and 64 and was graduated from there and I, by that time I'd gotten married mm -hmm. and uh, we had a son, uh, JP he's called, <laughs> <coughs> and uh, unfortunately uh, we lost him in a car accident at the age of seven Ooh. and uh, that was a difficult time because uh, he, he was a good kid. Uh, so. He and my wife at that time were uh, in a car accident with some other relatives, uh, nieces and nephews. And uh, JP was the only fatality. The other people were uh, uh, pretty well bruised mm -hmm. and uh, cut. Mm -hmm. uh, so JP was at the University of Iowa hospitals uh, for about a week. That was. This is a difficult time. I was up there all the time trying to see him come out of his coma. Mm -hmm. And uh, there was a little uh, <coughs> chapel, a, a kind of a, a chapel that everybody went to to pray. Mm -hmm. And uh, you always spent time there. You got to know other people who mm -hmm. had the same problems. Mm -hmm. I got to know uh, a rabbi, a Methodist minister, and a <laughs> Catholic priest. Mm -hmm. They used to come in every morning, yeah, I'd be there every morning and would sit and visit. They'd tell me what, what was your problem and I told them what the problem was and uh, how difficult it was. And I was sitting here with all three of them and they all three said to me, stop praying. Let them go. 
I see. He died. He died the most good anyway. Mm -hmm. uh, that was uh, that was difficult. That's right. So uh, after that, I still studied music. St uh, studied the violin for five years, <laughs> and uh, on with the trumpet, and uh, got a uh, teacher certificate, if you will, mm -hmm. teaching those two instruments. In fact, I had a recital <laughs> when. Uh, when I got my certificate, uh, I played uh, a violin solo uh, of Vietnam's Fantasy Appassionata mm -hmm. and a trumpet cornet solo of uh, Sansardi's Zigunovizen. Uh -huh. uh, <laughs> you don't forget things like that. <laughs> and so, uh, uh, I got my certificate, and I was considered a full-fledged graduate of a music academy. Uh -huh. And uh, so that was going on right about the same time I was also at Northwestern. Uh, so I got out of uh, Northwestern. This was a time when uh, marketing had become a big thing. Mm -hmm. In banks, it was more, before that it was, we take deposits and make loans. Mm -hmm. They didn't really do much of anything else. Mm -hmm. But I got realizing that marketing has got to be more important. They got to be, uh, and under that umbrella, we you know, we considered public relations, human relations, training, mm -hmm. uh, uh, all all sorts of stuff like that. We felt came under the marketing umbrella. And uh, then after I graduated from the financial marketing school, uh, it become my, a full-time effort on my part. Mm -hmm. but, and through all that time, it was interesting uh, because I had a lot of mentors through my career, and they teach you to look and listen and learn. <laughs> and uh, so every time I had a, less, a, a mentor, I'd say, I'm going to listen and learn. I said, so that's what you need to do. Uh -huh. and, uh, Take the good parts that you think are good for you and discard the rest of it. Uh -huh. <laughs> well, we had uh, we had a lot of fun with a lot of the a lot of the mentors I had. Uh, they just um, uh, were flowing with information that you know you're able to just absorb. And so uh, as I went on, now I was almost totally out of music. I was mm -hmm. just in the banking and. Uh, then I went from Iowa, I was offered a job with a bank in Madison, Wisconsin. And uh, I accepted that job. And uh, that, that's where I met Joanne. Uh, mm -hmm. we, uh, uh, she was the registrar for the Graduate School of Banking at the university, because it was part of the Banking Association. So, I started working there and I started going there that they sent me to that school. And that was a three year summer program. Mm -hmm. uh, you went for three years each summer mm -hmm. uh, to get a certificate to be considered a graduate of bank marketing, and, or banking in mm -hmm. general. So that, uh, that helped my career a lot there. Uh, and as I got to uh, the area where I started doing a lot of public speaking on marketing because uh, uh, there are a lot of banks that needed that but they didn't know how to go about it. Mm -hmm. So I was fortunate enough to be able to, uh, to help them in that, uh, those areas. Do I remember that banking also, you gave away coffee pots and things <laughs> like that for so many deposits? Do I remember that, that accurately? Part, that was part of the banking deal, yeah. yeah. We, <laughs> in fact, in Man Bucky Badger is the, uh, the uh, symbol of the University of Wisconsin. Uh-huh. <clears throat> and I came up with the idea when I was at that bank to get a little stuffed animal of <laughs> Bucky Badger. Uh-huh. <laughs> and there was a couple of uh, Chan Hansen, Michigan, Minnesota. Uh, there was a factory up there uh -huh. uh, that did teddy bears. Mm -hmm. So we asked them if they would uh, uh, do a Bucky Badger. So we sent pictures of them. After two or three tries, they got it right. A little Bucky Badger with a W on it. <laughs> big, big hit. And, and then we said, 
make a five hundred dollar deposit and we'll give you a Bucky Dancer. Oh, well, right. that went wild. That went <laughs> well, I mean, it was crazy. I mean, uh, the bank was worried they were spending too much money on Bucky Dancer, but we were getting the we were getting <laughs> the deposits and it was great. So that was that was a great promotion. We had it was kind of fun. But, now, when you were there, um, I went to the University of Minnesota, and so as one of the Big Ten schools. We were very jealous of the University of Wisconsin because their student union had draft beer. Oh yeah, do you remember that? That's right. Uh -huh. That's right. Yeah. That that wasn't so was for Minnesota. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they were known for that. Uh huh. The University of Wisconsin they had uh, had a lot of activity, and I got involved in quite a bit of it too because of uh, the banking relationship. Mm -hmm. uh, that uh, in itself was uh, was a good learning, mm -hmm. listening and learning. Do you still have a Bucky Badger? I think I still have the original one. Wow! And it's pretty old and ragged now, but uh, it was it was pretty was a popular item. In fact, uh, you get to know your competitive bankers, and uh, I have a lot of friends who are with other banks and come over and say. <laughs> My kid wants one of those Bucky badges. <laughs> Can you get one? I said, yeah, deposit five hundred dollars. I'm not going to put money in your bank. <laughs> no, we used to have a lot of fun with that. Uh -huh. Everybody wanted a Bucky badge. They uh -huh. showed me the, the cheerleaders came out for the football games holding a Bucky badge. Oh, it was, it was phenomenal. Uh -huh. Talk about branding. Mm -hmm. uh, that was a, that's that's another thing that became very important. To the part of the marketing aspect is learning how to brand something, mm -hmm. brand an institution or a mm -hmm. symbol or something mm -hmm. like that. I understand we're trying to do that here, but I, mm -hmm. I haven't seen any, anything of it. But uh, uh, that that's an important part of all of that. Mm -hmm. So, uh, well, I'm sorry, I should have had you bring your little Bucky Badger. <laughs> <laughs> if I could find it, it's, it's backed away somewhere. Uh, but um, after that. Uh, the time I was in Wisconsin, I moved there in '68, and I was there for 10 years, and uh, with the bank, we got to a point where also small banks needed help in writing bank policies. They didn't have the wherewithal to do it because it was small banks, in small communities. Well, the FDIC became very concerned that they weren't documenting as they should. Hmm. So I was hired by the Banking Association to come to work for them and help and work with the FDIC to uh, uh, do an investment policy, an operations policy, a loan policy, because uh, they go in and examine these banks and they didn't have any of that on record. So it got to the point they needed something. So I uh, was hired to help and work with the FDIC to write these three policies, kind of a fill-in-the-blanks type thing, mm -hmm. where we would write everything that was just appropriate and uh, under, under the regulations, and then you could say, hi, I'm First National Bank of wherever, I'm, uh, this is our investment policy, or our own policy, and then they would go through it and they'd talk about the return on equities, the return on investments, the loan to deposit ratio, these are all ratios that the FDIC wanted. Mm -hmm. And so we kind of beefed them up a little bit to help them to, to pass them, pass the test, so to be. Mm -hmm. And uh, so that was that was an interesting uh, period of time. Uh, and, uh, and banking has really had its transitions, hasn't it? Oh, true. Because it was a little, a little bank, then it got to be big banking, now it's back to little banking again, and just the other day I went to our bank, and it was gone. Yeah. So the the little banks are gone again. Yeah, and, yeah there's uh, a lot of that. Yeah. Uh, as a matter of fact, just before we moved out here, uh, I had uh, was hired by a bank holding company. Well. I'll back up before that. After I left that bank and I wrote these policies and all that, uh, I was called upon to do a lot of public speaking on this sort of thing to other bankers, which I spent a lot of time doing. Mm -hmm. uh, so this 
consulting firm in Chicago. It's called Financial Shears. Uh, they worked with a lot of little banks, hmm. and they hired me to come and work for them and do the same thing. So we moved from Madison to Chicago in uh, 78. And uh, Joanne uh, came in. She didn't, all, she didn't have a job. But she interviewed, and within a week's time, she had an offer from the Real Estate uh, Association, the Dental Hygienist Association, <laughs> the CPA Society. So she joined the CPA Society. And uh, she started out there uh, as a young executive, so to speak. When she left 20 years ago, she was the managing director of the mm -hmm. Illinois CPA Society. She had about 30,000 members, and she wow. had a staff of about 75, 80 people. Mm -hmm. and, uh, so she was very, uh, very successful at that. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, after, um, after I left the trade association, the federal home loan banks, the, there, there are 12 federal home loan banks. So not, that's not the Federal Reserve, mm -hmm. it's the federal home loan bank. Those are the banks that lend money to other banks, mm -hmm. long or short term, depending on what their mortgage ratio is. Uh, they hired me. Uh, to come there, so I uh, in 1981, I went with them and spent the rest of my career with them, uh, doing a, a lot of uh, oh, work, speaking. I did an awful lot of public speaking to the banking industry uh, about various topics. Like back in 1980s when uh, they relaxed the banking laws mm -hmm. and uh, savings and loans could right. now offer checking accounts, right. which we call now accounts, mm -hmm. and, uh, save, and uh, credit unions could. And uh, so they were expanding. The banks were getting very jealous that they were going to get their market. And uh, it used to be quite a battle. So anyway, I got to the point now where I was talking to savings and loan groups, the bank groups, and to credit union groups, mm -hmm. all of them uh, interested in all of this stuff. So I uh, had a lot of uh, a lot of speaking engagements to banking or organization because now savings and loans can say they're a bank. Mm -hmm. the credit union can say I'm a financial institution. Mm -hmm. They just have to feel like they were kind of uh, stuck in a hole. Mm -hmm. now it, um, it, it was an amazing uh, transition for the banking industry. and. Uh, it was, uh, I was happy to be part of it, because mm -hmm. uh, that whole transition uh, was, uh, was very exciting. I enjoyed mm -hmm. it, and uh, it was very good for me. Mm -hmm. uh, so when I went with the Federal Home Loan Bank, that was in 80, yeah, I think it was 1980, 81. And uh, the bank I went with is the Federal Home Loan Bank of Chicago. Uh, there are 12 federal home loan banks around the country, uh, anywhere from New York to San Francisco. And that particular bank has a territory, like my uh, territory, and she was the city, uh, the uh, state of Illinois and uh, Iowa and Wisconsin. So those are the three states that were part of the federal home loan bank of Chicago, where they could borrow money from us. Mm -hmm. to offset mortgages, for example. Mm -hmm. A lot of these banks uh, have long-term mortgages and short-term deposits. Mm -hmm. So this would be a real problem for them. Mm -hmm. uh, and the FDIC, again, would say, uh, you're, not, you're taking in uh, too many loans and you don't have enough deposits. Well, when that happened, they would come to us and we would offset that and help mm -hmm. them match their balance sheet. Mm -hmm. And uh, we could lend them money anywhere from overnight to out to 20 years. Hmm. because they have mortgages out, out that long. Whereas hmm. the Federal Reserve can only, they can only borrow from the Federal Reserve overnight or for 90 days hmm. at the most. Hmm. So it was, uh, it was an interesting time uh, and the banks were learning a lot hmm. because of all of the rules and the regulations that were changing. And as I said, I was happy to be part of all of that. So hmm. we, had, uh, we, we had a lot of fun doing it. And, uh, it was, uh, just, just a whole lot. Anyway, I had a lot of mentors <laughs> in all those areas, and uh, when we uh, moved here, we I retired in '97, and uh, 
as Joanne did from the CPA Society. Mm -hmm. And we decided we wanted to move out here, which we did in 1998. And uh, in 1998, uh, <laughs> I, I had a bank holding company say that they wanted to buy small banks out in California. So as you're moving to Arizona, you'll be in that area, would you do M&A work for me? So I did mergers and acquisitions for this bank holding company. And I, you go to California, there was a plethora of small banks. Mm -hmm. And a lot of small banks who had more loans than they did deposits, or they had more loans than they had capital to support it. Mm -hmm. So we go into these banks, say, you know, we'll fund you, you become part of our holding company, and uh, you can keep your name, you can keep the same officers, ha ha, <laughs> but uh, uh, we will take you over and <clears throat> help you with all of the business you have here. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I traveled, oh, I, I had a bank in Hemet, California, one up in Danville, uh, two or three of them, and so I had one in Florida, so I was traveling around again. Mm -hmm. Like I wasn't planning on doing, but I wound up traveling around some more, and uh, but it was it was good, and uh, there were an awful lot of as you said the small banks, uh, mm -hmm. because so many of them. Then it got into electronic banking. There's so many banks that have fixed assets, mm -hmm. branches, too many branches, uh, like the big banks. Now mm -hmm. they've got a lot of fixed assets and uh, not doing anything for them. And prob I noticed coming up, the uh, little uh, city bank is open today. Oh, right. uh, I was surprised to see. But uh, uh, it's, it's got to be a, uh, a cost to them. They can't, I, I can't believe that that'd be uh, mm -hmm. something that would be beneficial to them. Uh, mm -hmm. It's kind of like when we used to say junior checking accounts. How much does it cost? <laughs> They have a checking account. If somebody would come in and say, uh, I want to open up a savings account for my son or my daughter. And so the, the children would come in and they'd say, here's, here's $10, I want to open up a savings account. Mm -hmm. So everybody said, that's great, we're getting all these in. So you've got uh, 3,000 junior savings accounts. <laughs> with 25 to 50 dollars in them. Mm -hmm. And it cost you 150 or 200 dollars to, mon uh, to have that account. Mm -hmm. So I, <laughs> I kind of convinced a lot of banks to quit that mm -hmm. because it, it, it was too, pro it was, uh, too uh, costly for them. They didn't make any profits. Mm -hmm. Well, I wasn't the most popular guy in the world when it came to uh, closing, closing out these accounts. You, uh did a lot of, of marketing in your banking. Um, when you look back at Northwestern, what were the influences or what we talked about many mentors when you think about Northwestern and marketing? Because you had what several years of marketing with Northwestern? Well, uh, I think as I mentioned, it became a big thing. Uh, marketing before the 70s uh -huh. was uh, advertising on matchbook covers or uh, mm -hmm. in a billboard saying we give loans or the back of a park bench. You know, that was, that was marketing. Mm -hmm. I, and if a bank <clears throat> had some kind of a social function that they had to put together, usually the the president's poor secretary to fix this up. Mm -hmm. And uh, so there was nothing really to, and the Bank Marketing Association of Chicago, which was national, uh, is the one that really started putting this together and made people understand and we joined that. And that's the school that I also went to mm -hmm. uh, at Northwestern uh, for two summers. And uh, we started realizing the umbrella of marketing. Mm -hmm. It covers a lot of things. Training of employees, human resources, communications, advertising, public relations, all of these came 
under the the umbrella of marketing. Now, a lot of people disagree with that. And, it, and a lot of those departments have expanded beyond what they call marketing. Mm -hmm. But uh, back then, that was, that was marketing. We're not selling a tangible, we're selling mm -hmm. a service. Mm -hmm. We're not selling a bounty or whatever. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we're selling a service. And that was always, they said, more difficult to do. Mm -hmm. uh, but that, uh, uh, when that expanded, uh, it, you just got involved in all that. And public speaking, I, because I know a little bit about everything and not much about anything, I guess, <laughs> I was out speaking, doing mm -hmm. a lot of, in fact, uh, four years after I graduated from, graduated from the graduate school in Wisconsin, they invited me to come back and be on the faculty. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, as I became a member of the Federal Home Loan Bank, I was not allowed to do that. Mm -hmm. So uh, I, a good friend of mine took my place on it. But he, in fact, I think he's still there. Hmm. And uh, so that, uh, uh, the whole marketing aspect of it is, mm -hmm. I, and, and another important thing of this, and I, I say this, and I remember my mentor saying that, a lot of the bank heads now have had market experience because they know the bank. I knew the bank because I was hired as a bookkeeper and a messenger, then I was a teller, mm -hmm. then I was an operations officer, then I was a loan officer. Mm -hmm. And each one of these areas, listen and learn and know what it is. Mm -hmm. You have a full scope of what the bank is about. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of bank presidents who didn't last long because they came out of school learning uh, one aspect of it. Mm -hmm. And they come in, they're asked to run the whole bank. Mm -hmm. And uh, they don't know anything about the operations or about the other things. So they have a narrow vision of it. So th they usually don't last very long. Mm -hmm. uh, that the Continental Bank in Chicago, uh, they went through a lot of presidents. And they finally found one that worked. And he was the retired president of the Jewel Supermarkets. Hmm. Interesting. And everybody says, mm -hmm. President of Jewel Supermarket, uh -huh. the President of Continental Bank. Well, he, uh -huh. knew, he knew marketing, so uh -huh. to speak. Yeah, uh -huh. He knew what he was all about. And uh, it's uh, different how, how people address these, these mm -hmm. things and uh, how, what the outcome is. How do they listen and learn? I, I'm proud to say I have uh, uh, a number of people that I had the opportunity to mentor mm -hmm. uh, who my uh, nephew, JP, he's named after my son, mm -hmm. is a banker in Iowa. And my grandson is a banker in Milwaukee. Huh. And uh -huh. uh, they're both doing very well. Uh -huh. And a woman that I hired uh, 20 years ago, mm -hmm. uh, 40 years ago, uh, she was my assistant for a long time. And I'm proud to say, I talked to her the other day. She just retired from a very large bank as a vice president. Very good. Uh huh. Uh -huh. Yeah, I'm proud of her too. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it's uh, it's been a good career. I've been happy with it. Mm -hmm. And uh, as much as I hated giving up music, <laughs> I still have my trumpet, but. Mm -hmm. I don't think I can blow it anymore. <laughs> what about that violin? <laughs> yeah, I had uh, I had a violin. Joanne had a clarinet. She was a clarinet player. Uh huh. <laughs> and I decided I wanted a flugelhorn. <clears throat> I traded in her clarinet and my violin for a flugelhorn. Uh huh. Oh, the silly things to do. <laughs> <laughs> and can you play that? No, I uh, I gave that up. I, mm -hmm. I gave I gave it to I gave it to one of my uh, my I think one of my nephews mm -hmm. has it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I just kept my trumpet that uh, that I carried with me all over the world. I, it was with me in the army, mm -hmm. traveled through Germany, and uh, that, that was an interesting story because I I had the trumpet shipped to me, and it came, and I opened it up in the bell. And the, uh, and the good part of the tubing was all crushed. Hmm. And I thought, 
and it, what am I going to do with this? I was really beside myself. I had a, a horn that was you know, giving me the lend from the army, but I wanted my own. Mm -hmm. So when it came, uh, this one uh, fella, uh, he, uh, he, this, this fella is Chick Sponder. He's a trumpet player. He played with Stan Kenton. Mm -hmm. And a lot of the guys that were in the army with me who were musicians were played with Artie Shaw, uh -huh. you know, and with all these, and they were drafted just like I was. Uh -huh. So to be in that environment yes. with these musicians, uh -huh. I was, it was like going to school. Uh -huh. But uh, he said, I got this German uh, uh, instrument store. He said, well, take it down. I took it down. I said, what can you do with this? He said, give me about a month, and I can take care of it for you. Hmm. And what he did, he had a series of uh, steel balls, mm -hmm. and you'd set the horn and you'd drop the steel balls into the bell and take them out, drop them in until the, the dents wow. were moved out. So I got the, I got, there's still a couple of dents in it, but it's playable, and that, uh, and that uh, I had that with me in uh -huh. Germany, all over, uh -huh. uh, Berlin, Frankfurt, Stuttgart, Nuremberg, uh, up in, uh, over in the uh, United Kingdom, Italy, <laughs> and uh, so it, it, I took better care of it there. <laughs> it was good, yeah. Uh -huh. You were living here when the MIM opened, right? When what? When the MIM, the Music Instrument Museum, here, here in, in uh, Phoenix, Scottsdale area, yeah. the Dayton's unpacked their many treasures that they had collected throughout the world and then opened up the museum. Oh, yeah, MIM, the, uh, yeah, the Music the, Institute. Uh, MIM. Yeah, oh, yeah. sure, MIM, yeah. We, and, we, we've been to a lot of concerts there, and I've been through this, yeah. Yeah, and their section on trumpets, I think, is very interesting. Mm -hmm. yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, they, the, the horns and the, they're, they're a little heavy on guitars as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> yes, <laughs> they are. <laughs> but they have got some, some Good brass uh -huh. instruments and uh -huh. yeah, yeah. Now MIM is uh, uh, it was developed by a fellow I think out of New York. No, it was developed by Dayton. From where? Dayton, Dayton. Minnesota. Oh, was it Dayton? Mm -hmm. okay. The Dayton family. Yeah. But uh, that's a wonderful property. It certainly is. is yeah, we, it's one of my uh, favorite little, places the, to go. The concert hall it just mm -hmm. holds about three hundred people, mm -hmm. but. It's, uh, the acoustics are wonderful, mm -hmm. and we've gone to a lot of concerts. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Right, I think we can be very proud of that as... By all means, yeah, yeah, very much so, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, uh, reflecting back on a lot of things I'm, t I'm telling you about, uh, uh, it's kind of fun. I don't, uh, I don't know what else, you know, as I said earlier, I probably had, off the top of my head, my mother and one, one musician and about four bankers that I considered mentors to me. Mm -hmm. That really helped me along. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think it's, they all said, look and listen and learn. <laughs> uh -huh. Don't think you know everything. You uh -huh. never do. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And the more you know, the more you know you don't know. Oh, yeah, yeah <laughs> so. because I uh, I didn't go to college uh, uh -huh. high school, uh -huh. and uh, my uh, advanced education was in music and uh, banking, uh -huh. so to speak. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And when you were in Stuttgart, I just have to know, did you play um pa pa um pa pa? <laughs> well. We had uniforms mm -hmm. uh, that we only had to wear when we went down to a German town <laughs> to, to entertain them. Uh -huh. And then we were a marching band. Oh, I and, see. And uh, we would have our uniforms on and we'd march down, just like in a parade, mm -hmm. and march around the square, <laughs> and all the German people would be there clapping and going, but it wasn't oom pa pa but it was close to it. It was... <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we had to do that every once in a while, and uh, everybody said, "Ah, oh, we got another one of those." And they say, 
Count your blessings. <laughs> You've got a lot of free time to do what you want. You have to do that every once in a while. Uh -huh. <laughs> Sounds like it was fun. It was, yeah, it really was fun. Yeah, but, uh, uh, and then there were uh, uh, the Grenzing, the old uh, beer markets and beer uh, taverns. We mm -hmm. used to go down and sit in with the German musicians, and they loved that. Mm -hmm. uh, and we'd play with them. And uh, mm -hmm. it was surprising. We, we were into jazz a lot, uh, uh, beyond Dixieland, but mm -hmm. uh, uh, more contemporary jazz. And uh, mm -hmm. that was big over there. That was what first surprised me that they really, uh, they were really into that more so than the people in the states. In fact, a lot of black people, mm -hmm. musicians who I know, or knew. Uh, used to come over there because they they had a, a much more receptive audience than mm -hmm. they did in America. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What about that brother of yours? I'm sorry. I said, what about that brother of yours? My brother, he's 93 years old, Bob. Wow. And, uh, he eats steak and drinks wine, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, he uh, he played the trombone. He went to college. He played the trombone, and uh, his his all-time favorite was Tommy Dorsey, and I get getting <laughs> sentimental over you. He still has that record. I think. And, uh, um, and where does he live? I'm sorry. Where does he live? He lives now in Cedar Rapids, Iowa. Uh, mm -hmm. His he's got two daughters there, and then he has a daughter in Des Moines, and uh, so he's uh, got he's got good family there. Mm -hmm. and, uh, in fact, uh, the one, his one daughter, my niece, uh, uh, Susan. Uh, Susan was in the car accident that mm -hmm. my son was in. Mm -hmm. She was probably five years older than he was. Uh, JP would be 54 today. Today? Uh, the 10th of August, two days before my birthday. Uh -huh. And. Uh, she said, after all of this was passed, she said, you know, Uncle Bob, if I ever get married and have a son, I'm going to call him J.P. Mm -hmm. She did. Yes, how special. J.P.'s a banker. <laughs> uh-huh. Uh, yeah, it was, uh, that was a difficult time, but a lot of good things came out. In fact, she, we call him J.P. because the complex we lived in, there were a lot of young kids. And for some reason, Jeffrey was a big one. There were a lot of Jeffreys out there. He <laughs> said, one guy said to me, well, why don't you, is you're a banker, why don't you call him JP, like JP Morgan? <laughs> I said, that's a good idea. That's how we call him uh, Jeffrey Paul, we call him JP. And uh, Susan's son grew up, and he's JP. Interesting. Yeah. yeah. Special family. Yeah. Yeah, we're clo we're close. We're far away, mm -hmm. but we're we're close. we're close. I talk to my brother, oh, at least once a week. And, uh, wow. He's uh, he's he's doing pretty good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's excellent. And does he remember the pride that he felt? and buying you that trumpet? He did. Yes, he did. Yeah, he was pretty proud of it. Uh -huh. And my mother was proud of him. Uh-huh. And he saved that money. And uh -huh. it was an old silver trumpet. <laughs> and I thought it was just beautiful. Uh-huh. And uh, I played that up until my senior, uh, yeah, because my the trumpet I have now is the one I had then. I was in, in 1951, I bought that as a, a Martin committee model, which mm. is, uh, is, a, is a, a big uh, prestigious, if you will, not like a Bach or something mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, I played that old silver trumpet through high school in the band, and <laughs> then bought this one, uh -huh. that, uh, which was uh, a big occasion too. Uh -huh. yeah. But Joe That's played trombone for uh, in bands, local bands, for a while. Uh, mm -hmm. Then he, after he got out of, uh, he actually, he was in the Army, 
and then he came out, he got a, uh, went to college on the GI Bill, because we mm -hmm. would never have mm -hmm. been able to afford it. And then mm -hmm. my father uh, and his brother ran a beverage company. Mm -hmm. They sold soda pop, beer, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And uh, they worked very hard at it and, <laughs> and failed, if you will. <laughs> and they were, uh, my mother, she, she kept, kept everything going. We didn't know it, but she kept everything going. Mm -hmm. She was just back there <laughs> pulling the strings. <laughs> I lost her when I was about 19 years old. That was at the tip of time. Were you in the service then? No, I was, I was drafted in when I was 21. I was drafted in 50, 54. Mm -hmm. I was there until 57. Mm -hmm. So yeah, she, she was, in fact, I, when I came home, after I, I lived there for a while, mm -hmm. until I got out on my own. Mm -hmm. It was very we close to the family. Mm -hmm. Mom made it that way. <laughs> and you made her very proud. She had questions about me every once in a while, <laughs> <laughs> but she was my, she was my champion. Uh -huh. <laughs> if I got in trouble, she got me. <laughs> she would think you'd outgrow it. Huh? Yeah, yes, she was. <laughs> she was very much so. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. <laughs> well, a special lady, and you're married yeah, to a special lady. She was very much, mm -hmm. and. Uh, Unfortunately, Joanne didn't know her, mm -hmm. but uh, they would have gotten along well. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, and your brother, did he have a good marriage? Yeah, he was. Uh, he married a, a dear, dear woman who I considered a, a, more a sister than a sister-in-law. We were very close, and uh, he moved uh, after he got out of school. They moved to uh, Cedar Rapids, Iowa, with a company called Key Light Chemical. He was them for a while, and then he, then he went and became a salesman for Sherman Williams Paint. Mm -hmm. And he was with Sherman Williams Paint for 30, 34 years, and, mm -hmm. and he retired. And, mm -hmm. uh, he uh, moved, moved there in Cedar Rapids, so he's lived in Cedar Rapids for, for, since. 60, 65 years. <laughs> so he knows the territory well. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, he had a lot of trap. He was a traveling salesman. Mm -hmm. I used to talk to him about marketing. <laughs> he's not a salesman. He's, I sell paint. <laughs> well, is there anything we haven't covered that you want to be sure we, we do well? Cover? I don't know, did I go through my list? Well, I'm just wondering. Um, Benzer Enterprises, do... We started that in just as... We, the mm -hmm. two, we started it officially two months before Joanne retired. Hmm. And uh, we were still in uh, Chicago at our condo. We mm -hmm. lived right downtown in Chicago, mm -hmm. in our condo. In By the uh, river. Uh, I'm sorry? By the water? Oh yeah, we were right on Michigan Avenue mm -hmm. uh, on the 51st floor and looked out all over the city. And mm -hmm. We were there for 20 years. Uh, mm -hmm. and we loved that. It mm -hmm. was great. And uh, uh, used to, yeah, right, at, right on Maple Street Beach, mm -hmm. uh, right on the corner there. It was, uh, right by uh, uh, the hotel. I forget the name of it now, and uh, but uh, that was uh, probably uh, yeah. We were there in '78, and uh, I retired in January '97 or uh, December of '97. That's when we moved here, mm -hmm. and uh, so the 20 years here it just went so fast. Mm -hmm. And so did you miss got, the snow? Uh, I'm sorry? Did you miss the snow between, you know, Iowa, 
Chicago. Oh, this is Chicago, yeah. I was, it was a great training ground for me in many, many ways because my family was there. Uh -huh. And uh, uh, we, were, we were close. Uh, but uh, when in 68, mm -hmm. when I was offered the job at Madison, I wasn't displeased with leaving. I, uh, uh, my first wife and uh, my son moved there in 70, 68, moved to Madison. Mm -hmm. And we lost him in 1970. He was born in 64. I lost him in uh, seven, he was seven years old. But, uh, so we were happy to go to Madison. I, I teased Joanne, I said, I spent, uh, I spent 10 years there to get you out. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but she, uh, as she, did, she did very well with the CPA Society. And she, she knows trade associations. She knows mm -hmm. not-for-profit organizations. Mm -hmm. That's one of the things we liked about here. Mm -hmm. uh, God knows she's getting involved here. Yes, she <laughs> is. <laughs> but uh, and, you know, uh, Benzer Enterprises, we, because I was doing the merger and acquisition and she was asked to run the Information Technology Alliance, and we were talking to people about cruises we said, well, let's just call it Benzer Enterprises. So, mm -hmm. so that's, that's how we got the name. Uh -huh. And uh, uh, then the, the cruise business kind of petered out. Uh, the golf <laughs> didn't do a whole lot. We, we did two golf outings. <laughs> and, uh, and then we, I had a, a savings and loan and two, uh, two different banks mm -hmm. that we did cruises for. And, uh, now, if you were going back to college today, what do you think you'd get, get your degree in? What I want? What would you get your degree in? Me? Would it be, yeah, marketing, would it be sales, would it be banking? Oh, I'd you probably, had many. Uh, probably in finance. Finance? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah that's, um, I got more involved in that mm -hmm. just by virtue of the things I got involved mm -hmm. in. And of course, we always promoted marketing. Now, I, I, don't, I wouldn't say I want to get a degree in marketing. Now, that's kind of like a liberal arts mm -hmm. uh, general. I'd, I'd want something more in finance, mm -hmm. economics. Mm -hmm. And uh, I learned a lot of that mm -hmm. just by exposure to mm -hmm. Very, very well, very well people. Good mentors. Well educated people, yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, I listened and learned a lot. <laughs> and it was, uh, it was helpful to me because uh, uh, when I left the bank, I was uh, the executive officer for all banking services uh -huh. uh, at the Federal Home Loan Bank. And we were about uh, $75 billion or uh -huh. we were huge. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I was, uh, I felt, I felt good retiring because I left a, uh, a lot of staff there that did, that have done very well, like the young assistants I had. Mm -hmm. She became a vice president and uh, mm -hmm. she, she called me recently on my birthday. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Some great memories. Mm -hmm. Yes, you made good use of mentors and then you became a mentor. So yeah. that's excellent. Thank you so, so much for giving me the pleasure of being able to interview you well, and uh, for that's, people at Westminster uh, to get to know you better. I guess uh, uh, I, I enjoy talking about what, I, what we did and uh, the fact that uh, Joanne's the same way. She, she never went to college, mm -hmm. but she became a lobbyist mm -hmm. uh, for the Trade Association. She learned a lot from legislators and uh, mm -hmm. uh, then when we were together, uh, when I was writing the bank policies and uh, she was working there, uh, we, were, we were doing uh, lobbying for the banking industry in Washington. Mm -hmm. uh, Wisconsin was the first state in the union to approve electronic funds transfer. Oh really? I and we that. were part of uh, making that happen by 
we go to Washington mm -hmm. and lobby uh, the local, or the, 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 the legislators, and uh, yeah, that was a lot of fun too. <laughs> but we'd go there, and uh, then we were uh, licensed lobbyists in in Wisconsin, mm -hmm. and uh, so that uh, that was a good part too. There were a lot of a lot of little <laughs> times in there that uh, we did things that we, I don't say we wouldn't have learned in college. Mm -hmm. The problem I had in training a lot of bankers were they'd, they go to school, they spend four years getting a degree in uh, finance or teachers or something, mm -hmm. and they come out and uh, as I said earlier, that narrow vision. Mm -hmm. They didn't have a broad enough view. Mm -hmm. Some of these people, uh, we could prove that every time we trained them, that they would spend four years learning a particular uh, subject. 80% mm -hmm. doing that and 20% learning how to communicate it. Mm -hmm. When they come out, that just yeah, reverses. Uh -huh. They spend eighty percent learning how to communicate, twenty percent of what they learn. Right. And uh, it was amazing. It used to be very upsetting to see people come in with a college degree <laughs> that were not really all that bright. They got. Uh -huh. I shouldn't. That's some kind of say. But uh -huh. <laughs> it was. Uh, they had to be taught all over again. Yes. Well, thank you so much for giving me the opportunity well, to interview. You got me rambling on there. <laughs> so. And let me hear about a daughter. Yes, that well, I think. Uh, our daughter, Amy, mm -hmm. is, is quite an individual. She's a, a very successful uh, businesswoman uh -huh. and a homemaker. Uh -huh. uh, she has four sons. Uh -huh. and uh, two daughters, so uh -huh. uh, it's kept her pretty Six, busy. Yes. But when she was, uh, after she was married and had two of her sons, she was at the point where she wasn't satisfied with the daycare centers that were in the area. Hmm. So she decided that she was going to start a daycare center. So she uh, registered and was licensed to have a daycare center, which she called Amy's Academy. Well, that's super. And. Uh, it was doing quite well, and over the years, uh, she had six locations. Oh my there goodness! Were six daycare centers for Amy's Academy. So, she had that for quite a few years, and then a larger group came in and wanted to buy her up, mm -hmm. and she said, "Okay." <laughs> so, <laughs> so she sold it out, uh -huh. and uh, she then started working with her husband. Her husband Ken, as a large uh, property. Uh, uh, management uh, mm -hmm. and uh, they have properties all over the greater Milwaukee area so she joined him and they partnered up and they own the operation and they operate and they uh, run it uh, it's a pretty busy time mm -hmm. but also uh, her four sons uh, they became pretty pretty successful uh, the oldest son Yanni, who I mentioned earlier, is in banking. Mm -hmm. uh, he recently got married, and he's looking forward to uh, starting a family of his own. Uh -huh. And uh, the second son, Ben, has a degree in criminal justice, mm -hmm. and uh, he's working in the law enforcement in the Milwaukee area. Mm -hmm. The third son, uh, Gabriel, Gabe is a sophomore in college, and he's studying business. Uh, so. Then the youngest son, uh, he's graduating from high school this year, and next fall he'll be off to college. So they're pre they're pretty busy. Then, then she got two lovely uh, daughters. Uh, they're teenagers and they're in high school, <laughs> and they're very active in gymnastics and uh, uh, cheerleading and things of that nature. So basically, it's a very busy family. Mm -hmm. A lot they, of energy. Yes, very <laughs> much so. And Amy is Amy is the spark plug all of that. And I have to give her credit. She she keeps the family together. Uh huh. And uh, we enjoy being with them. Uh, 
listen to all the activities and things uh -huh. that are going on because there's never a dull moment. <laughs> and uh, so we enjoy seeing them. We're, sometimes they come out here to see us. So uh -huh. it's, a, it's a good relationship and we're very proud of it. Uh -huh. And when was the last time she was here or you were there? She usually comes in uh, May. Mm -hmm. She has uh, their, uh, their wedding anniversary. Uh, they were married a long time ago in Las Vegas. And uh, so I always go there in May, and so they come here first uh -huh. and visit. Uh -huh. And a lot of times, uh, w uh, time permitting, uh, some of the some of the kids will come with her. Mm -hmm. And uh, so it's uh, it's a good relationship. Mm -hmm. So we usually see her, see them uh, all or part of them a couple of times a year. Mm -hmm. That's really nice. Yeah. Very very nice. Yeah. So how did you get the name Amy? You know, uh, her mother, uh, she, I originally wanted to call her Laura, mm -hmm. <laughs> but I lost out. They liked <laughs> it. They, she, for some reason, she liked the A M Y. Uh -huh. I see it sometimes, it's uh, spelled A I M E, but uh, uh, it's just the old fashioned A M Y way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's interesting because I would think Amy would be hard to do something with that name, but you're saying she, she has at times. Oh, yeah. Am I here? Yeah. Well, I didn't know that she named the daycare center that way until after, after in fact, uh, I said, what are you calling it? She's Amy's Academy. <laughs> I thought about that. I said, okay, well. <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. But she was pretty successful with that. That's and, super. Yeah. Big liabilities on that business. The liability. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Well, so and one of the reasons she she was willing to, uh, to sell it out to a larger company, uh, the uh, restrictions and uh, mm -hmm. how they watch. I mm -hmm. mean, you could have a daycare uh, uh, director standing there talking to kids at a little table, and you'd be uh, fined for that because if whenever you talk to little kids, you have to be at eye level. Mm -hmm. And if somebody's standing up at them, they said, that's a, that's mm -hmm. a no-no. Right. Right? That's amazing, yeah. Mm -hmm. Little things that I would have never thought of. Mm -hmm. but, uh, very, very strict, yeah. mm -hmm. which rightfully so. Mm -hmm. That sounds like a very interesting daughter as daughter. well as career. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, she's she's a good <clears throat> business person. Uh, she's got a good head on her shoulders, and mm -hmm. she's really got the families pretty much close together. Yeah. <laughs> Very good. Yeah.